Hey guys, I'm glad you came back for another instructional video, whether your parents are making you watch this, your teacher's making you watch this, or you're just doing it for fun. I'm still glad you're here watching. Um, we're going to do another math video today looking at the area of rectangles using a formula instead of having to count out squares like we did in the last math video. Um, but make sure that before we get started, you have some materials with you to write and work out the problems on your own. And remember that you can always pause the video whenever you need to, to um, give yourself some extra time to think, or you can always go back and re-listen to part of it if you need to. So take your time going through it and make sure you pause after each example or in between when we're working through them so that you have a chance to do it on your own so that I don't give you all the answers. So let's get to it. Um, as I said earlier, we are going to be working on finding the area of rectangles. And so our target for today is I can find the area of a rectangle when given the length and width. And then also we're going to work a little bit at the end of I can find the area of irregular shapes. And so we'll talk about that when we get to that. So as a reminder, what is area? Well, it's the amount of space inside a two-dimensional or flat figure. So we worked a lot with rectangles and squares in the last video, and we're going to continue with that today in our video now. So last time in our video, we had um, shapes that had the little squares inside of them that we could count to help us. And we're going to look at a formula or just a quicker way of doing that um, so that we don't have to count all those squares. And so if we look at this rectangle here, um, we see that on the sides, instead of a number, there's an L and a W. And so the L stands for length and the W stands for width. So we're looking at two dimensional figures. Two dimensional means it goes two different ways that we're measuring. And so as long as we know the two different sides that are perpendicular to one another, um, then we can find the area. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Um, and once we know those, area is going to be the length times the width, or L times W. So you replace those with the numbers that um, are there. So let me show you an example. So we have this rectangle here that has one um, dimension is seven inches, that's the width, and then the length is three inches. So remember that when we're multiplying, it doesn't matter what order you put the numbers in, um, just as long as you have those two numbers and they stay the same. So I could do 7 times 3 or 3 times 7. But if the length is 3, the width is 7, then to find the area, I would just multiply those numbers together, 3 times 7. Again, you can do 7 times 3 if you want to. And then, of course, that would come out to 21. And you'll see, again, when we say area, it's going to be um, labeled with the... Um, inches squared or whatever the unit of measure is. I know some of us when we were doing the practice last week um, forgot about putting in the unit of measure when you're putting in your answer so make sure that you have that because that's really going to be important um, to label that. And then the squared just means that you're looking at two different dimensions is what that kind of reminds us of. So let's look at another example. Let's see if you can figure it out. So this one has um, only one dimension listed for us, but think about why that might be. If you look at that shape, it is actually a square. So what we know about squares is that all of the sides are the same length. So if it gives me one of them, then I know that all of the sides are four. So the length would be four centimeters and the width would be four centimeters. So think about what I would do to find the area of the square. You can pause if you need to. I would be multiplying 4 times 4 since I multiply length times width, and that would be 16 centimeters squared, would be the area of the shape. Now sometimes we're going to encounter um, some rectangles that have the same area, but a different perimeter. Um, and sometimes it's kind of fun, there might be challenge problems that you'll see um, in your resources that'll have maybe finding the different um, parameters that shapes will have if they have the same area. And so this is just going to give a quick overview of what that might look like. So if we look at the square or the rectangle that's orange, um, you can see that if I find the perimeter, I've got four going this way, I've got three with the length, 
4 again and 3. So if I'm adding the perimeter 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3, that would be 14 units. Then thinking about if I'm finding the area of that, I'm going to do 3 times 4. I'm just taking two of those different, uh, the length and width, and multiplying them would be 12 units squared. Now if I look at the green rectangle over here and I look at the perimeter, you can pause and take a moment to find the perimeter of that one on your own. I see that I have six squares for the length and for the width I have two. So that goes all the way around. I do six plus two plus six plus two, which is going to be 16. And if I find the area of that one, again, you can pause and figure it out on your own. I would do six times two, which is 12 units squared. So both of these rectangles have an area of 12 units squared, but their perimeter is different because they have different length and widths. So you'll find that um, throughout your practice. Let's look at one more example and you can kind of go through them. So I'm gonna have you pause and I want you to find the perimeter and the area of both of these rectangles. A big hint since we're focusing on same area and different perimeter, your perimeters should be different and your areas will probably be the same. But I do want you to stop and do the math to figure it out for sure. So now that you've tried it on your own, let's just walk through quickly what I did. So perimeter on the pink one, there's it's a square that's four by four. So I do four plus four plus four plus four to go around the outside for the perimeter, which is 16. To find the area, I'd multiply length times width, which is four times four, and that would be 16. Then if I look at the green one, I have eight by two, plus eight plus two, which is 20. And then the perimeter, or the area, multiplying eight times two is 16. So they both have an area of 16, but their perimeters are different. We're gonna switch gears a little bit, and we're going to look into another skill that's going to be, um, can be kind of challenging, but something that'll come in handy is finding the area of an irregular shape. What I mean by an irregular shape is one that's not like a rectangle or a square. Um, but it might be kind of an unusual looking shape that looks like this one. So the first step you're going to do if you see a shape that um, looks irregular like this is you're going to try and divide the shape into rectangles. If we already know how to find the area of a rectangle, and that's pretty easy, if we see a shape like this that we can make rectangles, a smaller rectangles from it, then that's going to make it easier on us. So I'm gonna find the simplest way that I can try and make maybe two rectangles. I wanna keep the number of rectangles that I make small just because that's going to be easier. I see right here that this one has, if you look at my pink line that just showed up, right along here, if I divide that here, then I'm going to have two different rectangles. So looking at those two rectangles, I'm gonna pretend like I kind of chopped them up in half and I have this one over here and this one over here. So if I look at that one, that little green space there, I'm gonna pretend that that's the same, it's right there, I kind of separated it out there. Notice that it's three inches by four inches, and so is the other rectangle, the other green one. Then I'm gonna imagine this piece is separate as well, that still has the same dimensions, three inches by five inches. So if I find, I'm gonna try and find the area of both of those separately. So looking at the green one, three inches of the, the width and four inches length, Three times four is 12, so the area of the green one is 12. If I look at the pink rectangle, I have um, five inches for the width and three for the length, so I do three times five is 15. So green area is 12, pink is 15. My last step to try and find the area of the entire irregular shape is I'm just going to simply add the area of those smaller rectangles together. So we had that green one was three times four equals 12. We had the pink one was three times five equals 15. So if I add the area of the green rectangle and the area of the pink rectangle, 12 plus 15 equals 27. So the area of this entire shape is going to be 27 inches squared. Let's try one together, just so we can see what that looks like a little bit quicker. So again, I have this kind of irregular shape. I have a couple of steps we're going to take. The first thing is we're going to divide the shape into rectangles. So where would you divide this? 
You could divide it in a couple different places, but I'm going to choose to divide it here. So I see that I have two different um, rectangles or a rectangle and a square that I can now find the area of. My next step is to find the, rec find the area of each of those rectangles. So pause and find the rectangle areas. I know this first one is 8 times 4, that would be 32. Then the second one is 4 times 4 equals 16. Now my third step is going to be add the area of all the rectangles together. So I already found out that the first rectangle had an area of 32 centimeters. The second one had an area of 16 centimeters. So 32 plus 16 equals 48. So the area of the entire um, irregular shape is going to be 48 centimeters squared. I have one more example for you, and this one I want you to try and go through all of the steps on your own and solve it, and then I'll model what my thinking is. So as a reminder, those three steps, divide the shape into rectangles, find the area of each rectangle, and then add the area of all the rectangles. So go ahead and do all three steps, then press play to see what I did. All right, now that you have tried it on your own, this is what I did. I'm going to make my rectangles right here. You could have done it right here and that's fine. So your dimensions um, should say the same with this particular one, but it could have been slightly different. And that's okay if you divided it there. Um, then I'm going to find the area of each of those rectangles. 7 times 2 is 14 for this rectangle right here. 5 times 2 equals 10 for this rectangle. My third step is to add the area of those rectangles. So if this one was 14, this one has an area of 10. 14 plus 10 equals 24. So the area that you should have got for this irregular shape was 24 centimeters squared. So again, if you need to go back through and look at more examples and talk through that again, please do it. You'll have a couple of examples, um, maybe some challenge problems that you can do in your menu in this week and the coming weeks. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, I miss you and I hope that you are doing well and staying healthy.